Hello guys welcome back to our anime explainer. Guys please like the video and subscribe to my channel thank you. Today is explanation of upcoming episode of Perfect World based on novel. So let's start. The mountain region was extremely quiet. Chi Daolin sat on top of a large piece of blue stone, his golden da robes fluttering about. His hair was pure white. There was an immortal and great aura to his appearance. However, Shahao knew that this old man was quite despicable at times, and even he himself was a stolen disciple. Whenever he thought about this, he would always feel like he was cheated. Dao Master, you are so powerful, you should be considered the lord of an area right? How about you just randomly give me a few magical artifacts? My requirements aren't high. Anything you used before, anything that isn't too bad, that it wouldn't make that much of a difference for you if you gave away, why don't you give me a few of those? Shahao said. Chi Daolin revealed a kind smile. That's not a big deal at all. When Shahao heard this, he hurriedly added, Dao Master, please don't give me any heavenly deity magical artifacts. You are already a sect master level figure, so regardless, you have to give me a sect protecting treasure, right? Chi Daolin's smile became even more friendly as he said, those magical artifacts are for the poverty stricken. Shahao was shocked, but he felt like something wasn't right. Would the old man be so generous? What does this look like to you? Chi Daolin unfolded his palm, his smile brilliant. Golden Dao robes shone. That hand streaked across the void, making the world release wing wing sounds, a concealment magical artifact. Shahao was doubtful as he stared at that palm. It was because he didn't see anything, magical artifacts are too insignificant. What I gift you is far more priceless and great. Chi Daolin said calmly, What is it? Shahao asked, The entire world. Chi Daolin said proudly. One hand pointed at the sky, one at the earth. These are all yours. Shahao was completely speechless. He just knew that this elder had a bad reputation, or perhaps it should be said to be a horrible reputation. With how he conducts himself, it wasn't very likely that he would give Shahao a great treasure. Sure enough, this really did leave others feeling duped. Chi Daolin's figure was imposing as he said, such a large world, one so boundless you can travel unhindered through the nine heavens and tenth earth. No matter what you want, go look for it yourself. Old man, can you not be so serious? I am getting goosebumps all over my body, Shahao said with a soft voice. Idiot disciple, you are angering me to death. Back then, your two senior brothers immediately gained flashes of realizations after hearing my speech, their hearts rising into the heavens, eyes brimming with tears, singing loudly how they were going to control the entire world, fight for the top, their heroic spirits were matchless. Look at how you are now. Your awareness is too low. Chi Daolin felt dejected. Is it really a flash of realization, or were they so angry their eyes were full of tears? Why did they never return after they were beaten up by others later on? Shahao said softly, What are you saying? This is too unreasonable. Questioning your Dao master, questioning your senior brothers, are you going against the sect? Chi Daolin glared at him. Regardless, this old matter lost him quite some face. Even this notorious Dao Master didn't want to bring this up. Nonsense. Dao Master, where did my two senior brothers go? Did you not look for them? Shahao put on a look of desiring to go out and look, you better close your mouth. If you bring up this matter again, I will personally kick you out of the sect. Chi Daolin glared at him, I was just a bit baffled. With Dao Master's strength, how could the disciples he taught be so lacking? Back then, what kind of figures made those two senior brothers run, abandon the sect to never return? Rat, are you looking for a beating? Chi Daolin's eyebrows stood on end. Even though he knew this mischievous disciple was purposely angering him, he still said a few things about the past. This time, you might be able to meet that person. What? Those two senior brother fellas are still alive. Dao Master, you really are weak. If it was me, I would have just directly wiped them out. You disgraceful fool who shames your seniors and ancestors, I am going to oust you. Don't do that. Dao Master, you have to have a generous spirit. You were just talking about how your heart needs to be as large as the world, and that's how great your future accomplishments will be. Shahao acted carkily, I would never bully others. Chi Daolin said through clenched teeth. Soon after, Shahao learned that even though they said that it was a group of people that came to attack Supreme Being Dao Right, it was actually someone else that secretly took action, defeating those two senior brothers. 
That person later on joined the great decisive battle of the 3,000 provinces and became number one under heaven, an ancient freak. He might have been sealed until this world. You are saying that I might meet him? Shahal rubbed his chin, feeling quite startled. When Shahal heard this, his face immediately fell. Last time, he asked him to fight for the top 10, and that if it really couldn't be helped, top 20. Now, why did this all get pushed back by another 10, old man, what are you trying to say? Aren't you underestimating me too much? He was quite unsatisfied. Chi Daolin sighed softly, his expression serious as he said, it is because I obtained a few secret rumors. Those individuals are truly formidable, what rumors? Shahao asked, the pile of bone books I gave you, the most stunning geniuses that were recorded, the few that tried to enter the divine flame realm through different paths, did you read them all, yes? Shahao nodded. Those people were all defeated, and the results were quite miserable, dead or crippled. Those ancient, most stunning unmatched heavenly talents truly were pitiful, recently, I learned that there are some that didn't die, living within a few forbidden ice caves. Chi Daolin said with a solemn and serious tone. This means that there are even more ancient monsters, and they are all extremely terrifying. Shahao was stunned. When he read those bone books seriously, he still felt regret. These heavenly talents that had left a dazzling mark in history had long fallen, unable to compete in this world again, it was too regretful. However, now, there were some that might still be alive, why do I feel like the pressure has increased several times? Dao Master, you aren't purposely exaggerating things, right? Shahal really felt that this battle was becoming more and more difficult, making him feel quite uneasy. Ever since he emerged in this world, he had yet to be defeated, for the sake of not crushing your self-confidence, I already spoke quite tactfully. You don't worry about it too much. The road of life is still long. Your experience is too shallow. After all, they are all freaks that have matured. As long as you grow up, rising up in the future is enough. Chi Daolin said. The more Shahao listened, the more upset he felt. He shot the old man a sidelong glance. This was still tactful. It was simply jabbing at his nose. Stars will dazzle the skies, all of the most powerful freaks of the ancient times will emerge. Who exactly will it be that rises up to become the great golden sun? shining in the heavens alone and overlooking these stars. Chi Daolin said to himself. Moreover, someone has already speculated that with the blossom of this true immortal flower, our era might very likely come to an end as well. The future is endless, but the end of this age will arrive. Chi Daolin was extremely calm, as his eyes stared into the distant horizon, what? End of an age. Shahal was greatly shocked. It might not be the end of an age, but there are taboo existences that had previously joined hands, using up a lot of magical force and time to carry out a deduction. The road ahead is boundless, the future unseeable, which is why everyone wants to strive to pass it. It is only possible through transcendence. Shahal was completely shocked. He didn't say anything for a long time. Only after a while had passed did Chi Daolin say with a smile, scared now. What is there to be scared of? Shahal was full of confidence. He looked at Chi Daolin and said, even though time is endless, the future boundless, one's life should still be lived greatly. Dao Master, you are so powerful, so if I act like a devil king, seize the holy ladies of every sect and open the imperial chambers one after another, there should be no problem, right? The smile on Chi Daolin's face immediately froze. He then reached out a large hand to slap him, saying, idiot disciple, what are you thinking about? I thought you had high fighting spirit yet you are tell me that you will open up bridal chambers one after another. I was mistaken about you. Shahal covered his head and snuck away like a rate, beaten until he cried out in pain. He screamed, this is the majestic dream of my life. You have your own dignity, so I won't have any hope in you anymore. It seems like I can only rely on myself. In the end, Shahal was beaten up miserably to the point where he truly couldn't take it any longer. He compromised saying, stop hitting me. As for my ideals, I'll think about them later and do it on my own. Right now, there is another matter that I promise you will be interested in. Chi Daolin remained unmoved, continuing to beat him. Damn old man, if you dare to treat me with disrespect, I won't say anything even if I die. He threatened, good disciple, this master was wrong. You should speak. Chi Daolin's voice became gentle as he spoke. Shahao shivered inwardly, feeling a bit fearful. Forget it. I'll talk about it. Everything is for my own ideals, 
going there to seize opportunities and increase my strength. He comforted himself. He looked at Chi Daolin and said, after I say this, you must not become stirred up emotionally. If you can't control yourself and run out acting randomly, I'll have to carry on your legacy, quickly becoming supreme being Dao Rights Dao Master. Little bastard, you dare curse me. Chi Daolin's face darkened, calm down, you have to be calm. Xia Hao said. Then, he waited for a long time to allow Chi Daolin to calm down his mood. Only when he was about to be hit again did he say, I saw the three world copper coffin, the nine dragons pulling it, stopping in an ancient place. What? With a ting sound, Chi Daolin's entire body erupted with endless symbols. A wave of terrifying aura rushed through the dome of heaven, tearing apart the skies and shaking the mountain region, stay calm. You cannot act randomly. Xia Hao said. He truly feared that after this old man was agitated, he would directly run over to open the cauldron, hurry up and talk. What really happened? Chi Daolin felt a sense of urgency. You little bastard, you won't die from a beating. Daring to eat anything, even daring to stew them. The pitiable Shahao suffered another beating, leaving him utterly furious. He complained to the old man, saying he won't bring him there. In the end, after this unique pair of master and disciple quarreled noisily, they headed for Fire Province's prairie to open up the Three World Coffin. Fire Province, a place vast and boundless. Depths of the grassland, master and disciple descended from the skies, you have to stay calm. You definitely cannot lose control. Shahao was still scared that he would be too agitated, directly opening up the bronze coffin. Doing this might cause great dangers, lead the way. Chi Daolin's words were concise, his expression serious. His golden Dao robes fluttered about, the eight ninth heaven art automatically operating. The two were like arrows that left bowstrings, entering the depths of the earth, disappearing into the boundless darkness in the blink of an eye. They displayed earth movement techniques, sinking down into the earth. It was extremely quiet underground and incomparably spacious. This was the enormous cave Shahao moved the three world coffin to, and it was unknown just how many li deep underground it was. It was so dark one couldn't even see their own fingers if they held them in front of their faces. As soon as they approached, even the fine hairs of someone as powerful as Chi Daolin stood on end, his hair and beard all moving. His Dao robes began to flutter about, and he erupted with resplendent divine radiance. There was a formless field produced in the surroundings, protecting Shahao and himself inside. He stared ahead. The underground world was brightly lit. There were nine sparkling skeletons laying on the earth in disarray. There was an enormous copper coffin covered in green rust. It was quiet and still, it truly is. Three World Coffin Chi Daolin reached out a trembling hand, walking forward step by step to touch it. His face was full of excitement, calm down. Shahao reminded. His mind was a mess, he didn't end up harming this Dao master, right? Chi Daolin stood there, covered in layers of symbols, illuminating this underground world. Everything could be clearly seen. The nine dragon skeletons were spotlessly white, the copper coffin ancient and filled with traces of age. The two together formed a rather strange scene. An ancient sacrificial voice could vaguely be heard, but there also seemed to be endless shouts of slaughter that rushed over like ocean waves. Shahao was shocked. When he came before in the past, it wasn't like this. Why was there this type of irregular reaction, before they even made contact with the bronze coffin, different people produced different scenes. Chi Daolin spoke. Even though his emotions were rising and falling, he didn't lose his reasoning because of agitation. Someone with such profound cultivation wouldn't make such rudimentary mistakes. Where was that mysterious flame? Shahao looked around, but he didn't see it, master, back then, for the sake of pursuing the three-world coffin, you ended up throwing your life away as well, causing Supreme Hall to fall. Today, I've seen it too. Chi Daolin spoke. How powerful was Supreme being Dao Wright's master in the past? Yet because of opening this coffin, he was greatly injured, and that was why he was later on killed after being attacked by Immortal Palace's ancient existence and some others, I naturally understand. Chi Daolin nodded. He was not going to blindly act rashly. As Chi Daolin got closer, the bronze coffin began to shine, becoming translucent like jade. It was different from before, appearing extremely mysterious, releasing an undying and powerful aura, the more powerful the one that approaches it, the greater the retaliation they face would be. Shahao revealed a look of shock. Perhaps only by surpassing a critical point would one not fear this wave of brilliance. 
Qi Daolin was greatly shaken. Even someone like him began to shake as he approached the copper coffin. He felt as if his primordial spirit was approaching a heavenly blade, actually encountering the danger of being hacked open. How formidable! Worthy of being the three-world coffin, one of the sacred objects that had been passed down since the immortal ancient era. Qi Daolin said. Bone texts interweaved around Qi Daolin's entire body. He displayed the eight ninth heaven art, overlaying the precious techniques, merging them. His aura immediately became incomparably great. Above his head, great stars flickered one after another, linking up into an expanse. Stellar rivers rippled outwards, as if a world was opening. In his surroundings, there were heavenly dragons rising into the sky, their bodies stretching across the dome of heaven. There were phoenix cries, creating a scarlet-red expanse, pengs spreading their wings, golden light in tens of thousand streaks, Shaha was shaken. This type of power was indeed terrifying. Displaying these techniques like this was definitely greater than just simply adding the techniques together at this moment, immortal Dao precious sound erupted, originating from that crack shaking Qi Daolin until his entire body staggered. With a WA sound, blood sprayed out from his mouth again. Old man, hurry and stop. Do you really want me to immediately become the Dao master? Sha Hao shouted loudly. Qi Daolin's entire body flew outwards, repelled by a tremendous wave of pressure. He was blasted into the depths of the earth, producing a deep human-shaped hole. Sha Hao was shocked. He quickly entered the hole to chase after him. He unexpectedly rushed out a hundred li before he found Qi Daolin. The final area was collapsed, burying him under earth and stone. There was bloody foam all around his mouth, his state was quite miserable. His golden Dao robes were torn. If not for the eight ninth heavens art protecting his body, he would have most likely split into pieces. How formidable, what a terrifying three-world coffin. Worthy of being a supreme treasure that has existed since the ancient times. Qi Daolin said with a sigh. Then, his eyes lit up again, unexpectedly not appearing dejected, instead excited and stirred up. I sense the aura master left behind. There is an imprint inside. Is this a sign left behind for me? I am going to get to the bottom of this. Dao master, don't take any more risks. It will put your life in danger. Shahao urged, do you think this Dao master Chi's eyes and eyelashes are empty? How could I send myself to my death? Don't worry. I know how far to go. Qi Daolin said. He turned into a streak of light, and then he appeared once again before the bronze coffin. Sha Hao was shocked. He followed along. This was the first time he realized how long the path of cultivation was. At the very least, he couldn't see the end of it right now. Who dared to say that they were at the very top? Even this old man was injured here. Qi Daolin's body shone. The eight ninth heavens art swelled again. He closed in on the copper cauldron. It began to shine with incomparable brilliance, as if it turned into spotlessly white jade, open. Qi Daolin roared. The heavenly art was displayed to its limit, simply having the power to break through the protection of the great world itself. It finally made the coffin's lid open up a bit again, master's warning sign. He felt a wave of horror. He sensed a ruined fragmented imprint, leaving him shocked and trembling. In the distance, Shahao was shocked as well. Back then, just how powerful was the master of Supreme Hall, unexpectedly leaving behind an imprint within the three-world coffin? His cultivation could be considered to have shaken both the past and present. However, Qi Daolin was blasted flying again, blood frantically spraying outwards. The higher one's cultivation, the greater the impact they would receive. Only after a long time had passed did Qi Daolin open his eyes. His injuries were a bit better as well. He circulated the eight ninth heavens art before saying, one final try, the nine dragon skeletons shone. The bronze ancient coffin burned like a golden sun, releasing undying brilliance, sparkling to the point of being almost transparent. Hong. Qi Daolin was shaken up until he took steps backward, coughing out blood with each step. However, the bronze coffin produced a strange change, opening up on its own. In the end, a small half of the lid opened up. Not only was Shahao stupefied, even Qi Daolin was stunned. He was just giving it one last try, yet this kind of change was produced. He really was about to open up the coffin. A rain of light surged, holy and untainted, surging from within that coffin. 
suddenly, a figure, rushed out, standing in mid-air. Forget about Chihau, Chi Daolin even felt his fine hair stand on end, chills running through his body, and his scalp even turning numb. A layer of goosebumps covered his body. This was too sudden, a sudden change in events. The copper coffin, that had remained still for tens of thousands of years, someone actually rushed out from within it. Brilliance shot out in tens of thousands of streaks, illuminating the past and present. This person seemed to be standing tall above the river of time. During the immortal ancient era, there were cultivators like this. In the present world, it was rumored that it was precisely what Western sect used as a reference. They obtained their damaged method, and then rose up to become a top-level inheritance, when Shahal learned this from what Chi Daolin said to him mentally, he couldn't help but be shocked. This was, just too shocking. This ancient monk, just what kind of cultivation realm did he reach? After the endless passage of time, he was still alive. Could it be that he was a true immortal? Everything they saw today was too shocking, leaving Chi Daolin and Shahal stupefied. A wave of chilliness ran from their heads down to their feet. They felt a great sense of reverence from within their hearts. However, they didn't feel oppressed. That white-clad, ancient monk didn't take action. His eyes were calm, only giving off a type of transcendent and unmatched elegant manner. Before the two of them could properly react, another figure flew out from the bronze coffin that shone as brilliantly as a sun, standing in midair. His Tao robes fluttered about, his hair thick as it scattered down his chest and back. His eyes were deep, and his body was surrounded by primordial source energy. He was high above, making one couldn't help, but feel an urge to kneel down and worship. When one looked at him closer, this person made them feel fear. It was because there were suns rising within his pupils and great moons setting. There was even the terrifying scene of stars shattering and the universe withering away. It was truly shocking. He seemed to have stepped over the river of time and witnessed the transformations of the world, the vicissitudes of eras. Meanwhile, in his hand was an ancient banner. Chaotic energy pervaded the air. Upon seeing it, one would immediately feel as if it could open up heaven and earth, its might boundless. Chi Daolin was petrified, looking a bit dumbstruck. He truly was shocked, could this be heavenly Lord Ching Wei? He seemed to be talking in his sleep, his voice barely discernible. He was completely stupefied. After who knew how much time had passed, the coffin's lid began to close on its own, no more individuals came out. Meanwhile, a row of terrifying figures had long appeared in the void. After counting them closely, there weren't too many or too few, totaling to ten individuals regardless of whether it was the white-clothed divine monk, heavenly lord Ching Wei, or the others that appeared later, they all possessed a divine aura that was difficult to describe. They didn't display pressure, but it still make others feel a sense of servitude, an urge to kowtow. Shahao propped up his chin, struggling to support his head. Chi Daolin was like this as well, because with a greater cultivation, the pressure he faced was greater as well. He was trembling slightly, resisting it with great difficulty. The two were too proud. Even when facing these unmatched existences, they still weren't willing to yield, doing everything they could to withstand and hold on, didn't they all, die? Why did they appear again? Shahal opened his mouth with great difficulty, his voice weak like that of a mosquito. Chi Daolin didn't understanding either. He believed the evidence that had been unearthed from the ancient ruins. There is something strange. The ten great beings never looked at them from start to finish, all staring into a certain direction, as if they could see through the earth, pierce through the void to peer into the future. In the end, a light wing sounded. Primal chaos surged, and ten figures rushed into the skies, go. Chi Daolin seemed to have sensed something. He grabbed Shahao and left this place, arriving at the surface in an instant. How formidable. Worthy of being the three-world coffin, one of the sacred objects that had been passed down since the immortal ancient era. Chi Daolin said. Bone texts interweaved around Chi Daolin's entire body. He displayed the eight ninth heaven art, overlaying the precious techniques, merging them. His aura immediately became incomparably great. Above his head, great stars flickered one after another, linking up into an expanse. Stellar rivers rippled outwards, as if a world was opening. In his surroundings, there were heavenly dragons rising into the sky, their bodies stretching across the dome of heaven. There were phoenix cries, creating a scarlet red expanse, pengs spreading their wings, golden light in tens of thousand streaks, Shahao was shaken. This type of power was indeed terrifying. Displaying these techniques like this was definitely greater than just simply adding the techniques together at this moment, Immortal Dao Precious sound erupted, originating from that crack, shaking Chi Daolin until his entire body staggered. With a WA sound, blood sprayed out from his mouth again, old man, hurry and stop. 
Do you really want me to immediately become the Dao Master? Xia Hao shouted loudly. Qi Daolin's entire body flew outwards, repelled by a tremendous wave of pressure. He was blasted into the depths of the earth, producing a deep human-shaped hole. Xia Hao was shocked. He quickly entered the hole to chase after him. He unexpectedly rushed out a hundred li before he found Qi Daolin. The final area was collapsed, burying him under earth and stone. There was bloody foam all around his mouth, his state was quite miserable. His golden Dao robes were torn. If not for the eight ninth heavens art protecting his body, he would have most likely split into pieces. How formidable, what a terrifying three-world coffin. Worthy of being a supreme treasure that has existed since the ancient times. Qi Daolin said with a sigh. Then, his eyes lit up again, unexpectedly not appearing dejected, instead excited and stirred up. I sense the aura master left behind. There is an imprint inside. Is this a sign left behind for me? I am going to get to the bottom of this. Dao master, don't take any more risks. It will put your life in danger. Shahao urged, do you think this Dao master Qi's eyes and eyelashes are empty? How could I send myself to my death? Don't worry, I know how far to go. Qi Daolin said. He turned into a streak of light, and then he appeared once again before the bronze coffin. Shahao was shocked. He followed along. This was the first time he realized how long the path of cultivation was. At the very least, he couldn't see the end of it right now. Who dared to say that they were at the very top? Even this old man was injured here. Qi Daolin's body shone. The eight ninth heavens art swelled again. He closed in on the copper cauldron. It began to shine with incomparable brilliance, as if it turned into spotlessly white jade, open. Qi Daolin roared. The heavenly art was displayed to its limit, simply having the power to break through the protection of the great world itself. It finally made the coffin's lid open up a bit again, master's warning sign. He felt a wave of horror. He sensed a ruined fragmented imprint, leaving him shocked and trembling. In the distance, Shaha was shocked as well. Back then, just how powerful was the master of Supreme Hall, unexpectedly leaving behind an imprint within the three-world coffin? His cultivation could be considered to have shaken both the past and present. However, Qi Daolin was blasted flying again, blood frantically spraying outwards. The higher one's cultivation, the greater the impact they would receive. Only after a long time had passed did Qi Daolin open his eyes. His injuries were a bit better as well. He circulated the eight ninth heavens art before saying, one final try, the nine dragon skeletons shone. The bronze ancient coffin burned like a golden sun, releasing undying brilliance, sparkling to the point of being almost transparent. Hong. Qi Daolin was shaken up until he took steps backward, coughing out blood with each step. However, the bronze coffin produced a strange change, opening up on its own. In the end, a small half of the lid opened up. Not only was Shahao stupefied, even Qi Daolin was stunned. He was just giving it one last try, yet this kind of change was produced. He really was about to open up the coffin. A rain of light surged, holy and untainted, surging from within that coffin. Suddenly, a figure, rushed out, standing in mid-air. Forget about Shahao, Qi Daolin even felt his fine hair stand on end, chills running through his body and his scalp even turning numb. A layer of goosebumps covered his body. This was too sudden, a sudden change in events. The copper coffin that had remained still for tens of thousands of years, someone actually rushed out from within it. Brilliance shot out in tens of thousands of streaks, illuminating the past and present. This person seemed to be standing tall above the river of time. During the immortal ancient era, there were cultivators like this. In the present world, it was rumored that it was precisely what Western sect used as a reference. They obtained their damaged method, and then rose up to become a top-level inheritance when Shahal learned this from what Qi Daolin said to him mentally, he couldn't help but be shocked. This was, just too shocking. This ancient monk, just what kind of cultivation realm did he reach? After the endless passage of time, he was still alive. Could it be that he was a true immortal? Everything they saw today was too shocking, leaving Qi Daolin and Shahal stupefied. A wave of chilliness ran from their heads down to their feet. They felt a great sense of reverence from within their hearts. However, they didn't feel oppressed. That white-clad, ancient monk didn't take action. His eyes were calm, only giving off a type of transcendent and unmatched elegant manner. Before the two of them could properly react, another figure flew out from the bronze coffin that shone as brilliantly as a sun, standing in midair. His Dao robes fluttered about, his hair thick as it scattered down his chest and back. His eyes were deep, and his body was surrounded by primordial source energy. He was high above, making one couldn't help but feel an urge to kneel down and worship. When one looked at him closer, this person made them feel fear. 
It was because there were suns rising within his pupils and great moons setting. There was even the terrifying scene of stars shattering and the universe withering away. It was truly shocking. He seemed to have stepped over the river of time and witnessed the transformations of the world, the vicissitudes of eras. Meanwhile, in his hand was an ancient banner. Chaotic energy pervaded the air. Upon seeing it, one would immediately feel as if it could open up heaven and earth, its might boundless. Chi Daolin was petrified, looking a bit dumbstruck. He truly was shocked, could this be heavenly Lord Ching Wei? In the end, ten streaks of light directly headed in the same direction, quickly disappearing into the limits of the horizon, that direction, is Chi Daolin's expression changed. Compared to when he first saw those individuals, his emotions seemed to be fluctuating even more greatly. Dao Master, what's wrong? Shahao asked, that direction is the boundless uninhabited region. Chi Daolin's expression was incredibly serious. He took a deep breath, feeling a great headache. His temples were even sore. What was going to happen? No one could say for sure, are they still alive? Shahao asked, impossible. Chi Daolin shook his head. He began to carefully think to himself. The ten figures just were not living creatures, nor did they have wills. The two of them stood there quietly, looking into the distance. None of them could have anticipated these types of changes. Why did these things happen, we might have sped up some process. I don't know if it is good or bad. Perhaps something might happen in these next few days. Everyone has said that the three-world coffin was mysterious, that it carried tremendous cause and effect. It seems like they aren't wrong. Chi Daolin sighed, his brows tightly locking together. Then, they returned underground to inspect the copper coffin. They didn't say anything for a long time, is there anything else inside the coffin? There can't only be ten streaks of light. After a long time had passed, Shahao spoke, there are. At the very least, the ones that I saw before haven't come out. Chi Daolin nodded. They stared at the ancient coffin, not willing to act recklessly. Suddenly, from the distance, a sphere of light appeared in the dark space. It swayed about as it arrived, approaching this place, that's it. Shahao was excited. He saw that mysterious flame again. It was only the size of a fist, extremely special. It was formed from pure symbols and not like a divine flame. It carried an ancient aura, full of Tao rhythm. Chi Daolin's eyes became deep as he looked at this flame. Even someone as powerful as him was frowning, unexpectedly unable to see through it. Is this the chaotic flame? Shahao asked with a soft voice, it is not. Chi Daolin shook his head. He had never seen that chaotic flame, but from what he knew based on bone books, this was definitely not it, immortal flame. This Dao Master Chi with extensive knowledge, and a notorious reputation, who had stolen from hundred clans felt a headache. He unexpectedly couldn't see through this flame, feeling that it was more strange the more looked at it, unable to understand its existence, Fire Province's state, could it be related to it? Shahao asked with a soft voice. When Chi Daolin heard this, his mind jumped. Fire Province was vast and boundless, a rough estimate of its size still reaching several tens of millions of li, perhaps even greater. A single flame underground, leading to an entire province releasing mysterious flames from time to time, use the immortal ancient sacrificial language to try and communicate with it. Have it follow you. When Shahao heard this, he immediately took action. However, that flame was extremely calm, bright and clear as it suspended in the air, facing them without displaying any changes. Shahao's mouth and tongue became dry from talking too much, wasting four hours of time here like this. In the end, his throat almost discharged smoke, yet that flame never budged an inch. This made him so angry, he truly wanted to grab it over in one go. This flame was too sinister, terrifying to the extreme. It could definitely burn a giant to death. His body shone, about to bring Shahao with it away. However, he discovered that this flame arrived with incomparable speed, separating the master and disciple. The only thing that made him feel a bit relieved was that this flame came for him, not burning Shahao. Without thinking about anything else, Chi Daolin rushed into the heavens, leaving this underground world. The blazing fiery light became dim. This flame recovered its previous appearance, becoming soft, suspending itself in front of Shahao. That old man really ran fast, he left me here. Shahao grinded his teeth in anger. The fist sized sphere of flame was transforming. It began to change in size, first turning into a small tree that was less than a meter tall. It was completely made of symbols, strange and mysterious. Shahao's eyes immediately widened. This little tree, why did it, look so similar to the willow deity? In that instant, this flame changed, turning into streaks of lightning covering the void. These were also made of symbols, 
it is imitating the Lightning Emperor's technique. His mind jumped. Then, this flame changed again, forming a bird that moved its wings. When it doved down, it turned into a fish, swimming a circle in the void around him, Kuan Peng. Shahao's expression continuously changed. This flame could sense the methods he studied, the unmatched precious techniques he had touched upon. Was it imitating them, or was it trying to communicate with him? It's starting again. Shahao's pupils were like blades as he stared forward nervously. Its transformations were clearer and clearer each time, appearing more and more real, even to the point of having life. At this moment, the sphere of fire turned into a tree again, its trunk like a dragon that stretched into the heavens. Branches hung downwards one after another like divine chains of order, releasing Hualala sounds. It's even more like the willow deity now. The lightning emperor's technique appeared next. Lightning covered it densely, forming a human figure that towered into the heavens above. This figure produced a technique that wouldn't fade after tens of thousands of years, incomparably mysterious. Turns out it could also be like this. Shahal was greatly shaken. This flame wasn't displaying the true technique, but rather deducing things, and then expounding into a transcendent concept. It left him greatly shaken. It was like a mirror, illuminating unmatched techniques. In that instant, Shahal seemed to have seen how he was lacking. As he watched the techniques and Dao through this flame's illumination, he discovered that they had a few flaws, using flame as a mirror. Shahal's eyes became brilliant. He calmed himself down, and just like that, he observed those techniques and Dao, observing the scenes produced by that flame. It produced a reflection, displaying the weaknesses of his own Dao path. If I continue like this, even if I am not the Lightning Emperor, nor the Kuan Peng, perhaps I might be able to display the greatest power only they can display one day, right? No matter what precious technique it was, the one that created it would always display its greatest power, because that was what was most suitable for them. It was extremely difficult for later generation individuals to harmonize with them to a perfect state. Strong winds blew about. The underground world was greatly stirred up. Qi Daolin returned. Not only did he operate the eight ninth heavens art, he even operated a magical wheel as he descended to this place. How formidable. This flame is enough to burn an unmatched taboo existence to death. Qi Daolin's expression was complicated, revealing endless shock. He began to search about here. When that flame became calm again, becoming gentle and holy, it was like an ancient lamp that would never go out, accompanied by the heavens and observing the great Dao. However, once it erupted, it became incomparably terrifying. Qi Daolin deeply understood that even if the old celestial came at his golden age, he would most likely still nurse a grievance. This flame made of symbols was just too strange, where did it go? Qi Daolin asked. Shahao shook his head. Just now, the light was so resplendent he thought that he had been burned to ashes, so he wasn't able to see where the mysterious flame flew off to at all. Qi Daolin frowned. His divine senses were extremely powerful, but in that instant, he completely lost track of that mysterious flame's aura, as if it disappeared into thin air. This was quite strange, as if that flame had spread out so thinly that it disappeared off the face of the earth. It couldn't have entered your body, right? Qi Daolin was confused. However, when he raised Shahao and looked around, he didn't see any traces of it. Shahao observed himself, but he similarly didn't feel anything, it really is weird. Where did it go? The master and disciple looked around, did it enter the copper coffin? Shahao asked, impossible. I was in that direction just now. Qi Daolin shook his head. He was standing between the copper coffin and fiery light, so that streak of fire definitely didn't approach the nine dragon skeletons, or ancient coffin. They looked all around the underground world, but didn't notice anything, Yi, it moved. Shahao was shocked. He saw the copper coffin move and the nine skeletons shine. A faint bright mist pervaded the air, releasing a shocking wave of fluctuations. Then, the void became blurry, caving in. This place began to distort, set out on a journey. Qi Daolin's gaze pierced out like electricity, staring in that direction, but he didn't move. Before leaving, Qi Daolin carried out another inspection on Shahao, and after ascertaining that the flame was no longer there, he left. If you can't obtain it, then I have to go seize the great scarlet sky flame. That flame was a well-known ancient flame. From what was excavated from ancient ruins, it was extremely shocking. The past great scarlet sky heavenly lord weaved through the nine heavens and tenth earth, a figure that was terrifying to the extreme, no need. Shahao shook his head. The first reason was that he didn't want to walk the path another took, and the second was because he didn't want Qi Daolin to risk the danger. It was because that flame was what Goddess Academy was using as a bargaining chip with Divine Cliff Academy. Multicolored light flashed. They disappeared from this place and arrived at the surface. Then, 
they returned to that quiet monastery. During the following two days, Qi Daolin observed the sky, but from time to time, he would vanish, hurrying to various places to see if any strange things were taking place in the higher realms. He was quite nervous. It was because the ten streaks of immortal light rushed out from the copper coffin and entered the boundless uninhabited region's direction. There was no way this didn't change anything, ha ha. A great laughter sounded, when Qi Daolin disappeared again, guests arrived at the mountain gate. Shahao was pleasantly surprised. He went out to greet them, finding that it was unexpectedly second baldy Kong Chioji. Of course, now, this peacock was no longer some baldy. When he moved out, his five colored feathers were brilliant, as if undying immortal gold moved across the sky. It was brilliant and dazzling, how come you came? After arriving in the higher realms, Shahao missed those of the lower realms quite badly. Those that entered the higher realms and knew the inner details weren't that many. Come over and drink with us. Shahao called him over, this fatty is extremely formidable. Second Baldi was suspicious. The little fatty laughed bashfully and said, I am just a small supreme expert, haven't even grown up yet, less nonsense. You have the higher realm's third killing formation engraved in your body and can release chaotic sword energy, able to easily trap and kill exceptional talents, yet you still dare to spout this kind of bullshit. Shahao directly exposed him. This damn fatty had even conned him and Grandpa 15. Second Baldy was immediately shocked. He widened his eyes and said, Motherfucker, the third killing formation is engraved in his body. My clan doesn't even have this. Damn fatty, you are definitely one of those freaks that have been hibernating until now, right, right, he is precisely a freak, saying how he was going to enter some ruins to find the second killing formation and also engrave that in his body. Right at this moment, a palm-sized snow-white little rabbit jumped over, her eyes like gemstones as she cried out. In addition, its mouth had a stalk of medicine that was shining and releasing a clear fragrance. Shahao's eyes immediately became round. He angrily said, Rabbit, you dare steal my soon-to-be holy medicine. He was so angry he ran after it. These past few days, he opened up a medicinal field in the most sacred place of this mountain gate, planting a few spiritual medicines inside. There was even a soon-to-be holy medicine in there. As a result, this rabbit had unknowingly when muddled its way in, and like a radish, nibbled it a few times, almost eating it completely. Second Baldi's eyes immediately widened. This was a soon-to-be holy medicine we were talking about. When it saw Shahao throw itself over, the snow-white little rabbit screamed out, in origin sky secret realm, you were still trying to steal my stalk of holy medicine. So stingy. It was precisely the lunar jade hair. She was supposedly the race's supreme being's younger sister, but many people suspected that this was the supreme being herself. Shahao was embarrassed. In the end, he stopped. After all, this rabbit, Kao Yusheng, and himself had fought many enemies together, so they could be said to have experienced trials and tribulations together. The palm-sized snow-white rabbit turned into an extremely tender little girl, who was pretty like a porcelain doll. This was especially the case with her pair of eyes that were red like gemstones. Second Baldi's eyes were about to pop out from staring at her. These people sat in the mountain region, roasting vicious beasts and drinking wine. Of course, this little rabbit said that it wouldn't eat meat in a glorified manner, devouring Shahao's medicinal garden into a terrible state. Fortunately, he left the wondrous medicine and several stalks of holy medicine with Grandpa 15, or else the losses would be too severe. Of course, the little rabbit said she ate only vegetables, after a few cups of alcohol entered its stomach, it directly became completely drunk, directly grabbing at the fragrant roasted meat on the open fire, eating it until its mouth was dripping with oil. Second Baldly revealed a fake smile, taking the initiative to worm his way into being friends with her, preparing a toast. In the end, with a peng sound, he was directly sent into the clouds by the little rabbit's legs. I fucking swear, this rabbit's legs are too powerful. Second Baldly grinded his teeth. If not for entering the divine flame realm a long time ago, he might have directly went unconscious. Towards this, the little fatty cow Yushin understood deeply. He spoke out with sympathy, when she has nothing to do, she always runs to Great Peng Mountain. Other rabbits kick eagles, she kicks great golden-winged pengs every day. Towards this, Peng Lord even began to complain, personally paying Luna Jade Rabbit's clan elder a visit. Nonsense, I only go a few months out of the year to protect the mountain and tend to the pengs. The little girl corrected, motherfucking freaks. Second Baldy discovered that the fatty and large, 
Ruby-eyed little girl, couldn't be looked at like normal people at all. By the way, the limelight on you is too great. This isn't some good thing, especially after Dao Master Chi said that all supreme experts and divine flame realm experts can come challenge you. Quite a few people have now become restless. Who else dares to come? These individuals drank while chatting carefreely. This issue was raised. Be a bit more careful, someone truly vicious might come. Is that so? Shahal was moved when he heard this, Immortal Palace's inheritor has come, and there is also the Holy Lady from Heaven Mending Sect. The little fatty said rather mysteriously while looking at Shahal. Shahal turned around and said, You seem to know quite a bit. I just happened to see it by chance. Recently, quite a few people arrived in Goddess Academy, all cultivators from different sects. Out of fear towards Dao Master Chi's ferocious might, none of them dares to directly barge into this place, temporarily entering Goddess Academy. Immortal Palace's inheritor, and heaven-mending sects, Holy Lady Yu Chan seems quite interested in a young lady named Ching Yi. The little fatty said in a rather wilky manner, Damn fatty, you know quite a bit huh? Shahao was shocked. He felt like this fatty might have seen through Yu Chan's second body problem. I also heard that Immortal Palace's inheritor appeared in Goddess Academy, seemingly wishing to bring away a female disciple. Second boldly said. He had also visited that place, later on hurrying over here from the academy, courting death. Shahao sprung to his feet. Only now did he understand why Ching Yi hadn't appeared during these past few days. Turns out she was stuck inside the academy, hey, what are you thinking of doing? Killing Immortal Palace's inheritor. The little rabbit jumped up with excitement, going to Goddess Academy. Shahao said. He took the initiative to fly outwards. This video will end here. Thank you for watching.